Keenan Blackshear as the 10th seeded Wolfpack will take on the number seven seed Dayton uh, Thursday afternoon at 2.30 Mountain Time, 4.30 Eastern here at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. And with that, we will open up questions for our student athletes. Matthew Coles, Associated Press. Just wanted to ask you guys, you dropped a few games in January and then since about February 1, you guys have been hot, not losing, playing together. What's been the difference? I think it was when we lost to New Mexico in the pit. We lost by 30, um, and, and we're an old veteran team, and we knew that uh, that, that wasn't us. Um, so for us, we knew that uh, we just had to get connected because we felt like um, that was not only was that a bad game, but it was embarrassing. Um, so I feel like ever since then, we've changed. And our one key word is the team has been connected. And I think that's been us um, from that game on. We've been connected. We say it every time we break the huddle. To piggyback off what he said, uh, had the players meeting right after New Mexico. Uh, got embarrassed. Uh, we told each other, uh, we're in this for the long haul. We're going through the valleys and the, uh, the mountains together and just staying connected is the most important thing that we could do uh, through this time. And it's shown in those February past. Alex Margulies, Nevada Sportsnet. Uh, for both of you guys, um, this is what you dream about, man. You know, you, you grow up playing backyard basketball, whatever, and you always think about playing March Madness. For you, Jared, first, I mean, you've obviously been here a couple of times, but how much of it is a dream come true to be able to play on this kind of a stage? Uh, I think it's awesome. And then for us to be able to play in Salt Lake City, uh, the closest uh, location you can get to Reno is awesome. Uh, easy for my family to get to, as well as for all of our fans. Uh, I'd mentioned it before, but uh, kind of hoping for a home game, um, you know, for all of, our, all of our fans to get there. So it's pretty cool. Obviously, a dream come true, but like you mentioned, um, you know, I've been here before, uh, so is Key and the rest of our team. So uh, I know we'll be ready to go. And to us, I don't think we've seen, we've pretty much seen everything you can see in college basketball. So uh, I don't think there'll be any, any surprises, hopefully. But we got to handle business. Uh, this is a dream, really. Uh, my second time around, the first time I was in awe, really it just being around all this and just seeing all the March Madness stuff everywhere. And, and now, like, I feel a little bit more comfortable. And now I have to instill that in my teammates who haven't been here now. And then, and then that's it, really. For both of you guys, uh, it's the last time potentially you put on a, a uniform uh, wearing Nevada across your chest. Uh, let's start with you, Keenan. Just how badly do you want to you go out on a high note knowing that you came to the NCAA tournament, get a win, and, and kind of wash away what happened last year and be able to kind of make your mark you know, as a player as, as you go on this kind of final stretch? Uh, uh, I always just wanted to uh, elevate each year. For me personally, like from my first year to this year, uh, it's been tremendous uh, elevation, really. And I think uh, the legacy that it'll leave uh, here at Nevada, uh, having been here in a while, and just getting back to the getting back to the uh, expectation of what this group can do, and I feel as if we can do that. Uh, I think. You know, it's definitely going to be a little different knowing that, you know, potentially it could be the last time wearing a Nevada jersey. I take a lot of pride uh, having a Nevada jersey across my chest. So uh, I don't want this thing to stop. Uh, it's a really good group of guys. And, um, you know, I know that uh, for me and Key, uh, we've enjoyed every moment. Um, so we're going to do everything we can to keep this thing rolling. And me and him both being seniors, uh, we got to lead this team to victory. Uh, we've been in this situation before, being in the NCAA tournament. Um, and we got embarrassed against Arizona State in Dayton. Um, so now we get an opportunity to play Dayton this year. So uh, hopefully we can go out there and play our game. David Jablonski, uh, Dayton Daily News. For both of you, what sticks out about Dayton on film and Deron Holmes specifically? Uh, I feel as if uh, they're a, he's a real good presence in the inside. And it's gonna, we're going to have our hands full with him. Uh, with him. And he has shooters around him, so it, it makes it kind of hard to help and things of that sense. But we have game plans in intact for him and for the team. Uh, he's a really good player. Um, you know that we know he's an NBA guy and obviously very, very skilled. Um, he's done a tremendous job leading his team. And then I know that um, surrounding the floor, they got tremendous shooters. I think they have probably the best shooter in the country uh, in Brea. So they got shooters around them. They got a really good big. And uh, obviously, they've had a tremendous year. So it's going to be a tough matchup. But uh, hopefully, we can go out there and, and handle business.
Matthew Coles, AP. Um, you guys are great when you get off to a good start. I think 24 and 0 when you're leading a halftime. How important will it be for you guys to get out of the gate quick tomorrow? Uh, it would be very important. Uh, this team is a, like he said, one. they have one of the best shooters. So uh, we have to just, we have to put our, uh, our foot on the neck early and just continue to have that momentum throughout the whole game. Yeah, I think it'll be important for us to go out there and play our game, keep our identity. Um, you know, things can't change once you get to the NCAA tournament. So hopefully we can go out there and uh, play our game. We've been a really good defensive team all year. I think we had a lapse the other night uh, in Vegas when we lost Colorado State. So hopefully we can go out there and, uh, you know, play our game, slow them down a little bit, um, and once, once again, get off to a good start. When you look at uh, Dayton on film, is there anyone they remind you of that you played this year, whether it's Mountain West play or, or just out of conference, just the style, you know, that they play slow, a lot of threes, big guy inside. Is there anything that can kind of stick out in your mind? Uh, I don't, I don't think I don't so. I, I, I don't, I don't think that there's too many bigs like Deron Holmes in the country. I mean, we've mentioned that I just saw he was all American. Um, so, you know, they're probably the first type of team we've seen then elite shooters to surround them. Um, so I think they're they're going to be a really good, really really good team, and obviously a tough matchup with Teron Holmes being the player he is. So uh, you know, hopefully we can do our best to slow him down, but it's not going to be easy. Like I mentioned, 20 points, eight rebounds, uh, all American, so it's not going to be easy. Uh, I can't really uh, think think of no other team. Probably the closest is probably Utah State, but uh, with him and the and Utah State's big, kind of how, how they surround him, at, but. I don't think there's no other team like them. At uh, Holmes, you obviously took on Jaden Ledee, who's a big, kind of powerful guy inside. How could you compare, you know, the challenge of Holmes versus Ledee, at least from what you've seen on tape? Uh, probably their motors are similar. Uh, never giving up, really. Uh, I feel like, oh, also they, they draw fouls at a high rate, both of them, uh, they do. Uh, I think those are the two biggest similarities that they have, I feel. Uh, yeah, no, Keenan mentioned it, both those guys, both Jane Ledee and Dron Holmes do a good job drawing fouls. Uh, both All-Americans, Jane Ledee All-American, this guy, uh, Holmes is All-American. Um, so they're both really good players. Um, I think they both, they both kind of have their own types of games. Jaden Ledee is a little more physical and, you know, obviously Jaden Ledee, there's not too many physical specimens like him in the country, uh, but they're both really good players. In terms of their three-point shooting, you guys have done a great job this year defending the three-point line. What do you feel like is some of the key in terms of the way you guys play defense in order to, you know, keep that three-point shooting at bay? I think we got to close out with a high stick hand, um, but I don't. Th honestly, I don't think there's another team that we've faced all year uh, like Dayton with their ability to shoot the three ball. Um, so we're gonna have to close out uh, urgently, knowing that um, they're elite shooting the three. So it's not gonna be easy. We got to go out there with high hands, and I know we all got to do a good job of helping each other out when they drive the gaps. Uh, our pressure. Uh, it really just comes down to our pressure and how in the ball we are. Uh, I feel as if when, when we're pressuring the ball and just pressuring the, uh, the offensive player. Feel as if we always have the the answers. Uh, we, we'll be in the gap more. We'll just be more connected, really, because that's what our uh, our defense is really predicated off is pressure. Okay, we have a question from uh, Chris Murray, who has joined us via Zoom. Uh, for for both you guys, could you just talk a little bit about what it would mean um, to you guys to be able to win an NCAA tournament game for Nevada and, and to be able to advance in this tournament? Uh, I don't know the last time, probably 2019, if if I'm if I can be corrected. I think 2019 was the last time they won a NCAA game, and it would mean a lot uh, to to Reno really to just have their team just advance. Uh, and you know the historic history with the twins and the and the people that came before them. I feel as if they would be big. Uh, I think it'd be awesome uh, knowing that you know Reno community takes a lot of pride in uh, the basketball, uh, especially in our team. We've gotten great support all year, so I know that uh, winning this game would be awesome, and to be able to do it uh, in Salt Lake City, where we're very very close to Reno, I think it'd be pretty cool and. Uh, I know that our fan support isn't like anywhere else in the country. So, um, you know, once again, I think it'd be pretty cool.
different caliber of basketball to end this season compared to last year. I don't know if looseness is the right word or maybe freedom. I guess how would you compare how you guys are feeling heading into this tournament compared to last year? Uh, I feel like it comes down to experience, really. Uh, being that, that me and Jared are the leaders, uh, it starts with us, really. Uh, we have to have a calm head that, that, that gives our soldiers calmness inside within and just just tell them enjoy this moment and then just go out here and just have fun really because this is the last moments that we we'll have as a team together. Uh, Keenan mentioned it but you know I think especially for us seniors we got a decent amount of guys um, who you know could be their, potentially their last time wearing a Nevada jersey so got to go out there have fun and I think uh, another big thing is just enjoying the moment not everybody gets to play in the NCAA tournament so enjoy the moment have fun and uh, you know if you put the work in you know it's going to show when the lights get on. Last one for me, but um, I know you guys are playing for yourself and your city, but also playing for the Mountain West to a degree, given how the seeding broke out. Uh, you know, Colorado State getting a win for the conference. I guess, um, do you feel like the Mountain West has something to prove in this year's NCAA tournament, getting those six bids, but maybe not the seeds you guys felt like you earned? Yeah, uh, I think that we we definitely were disrespected uh, as a conference. Um, and it was great to see Colorado State win uh, last night, and hopefully Boise State does the same. Um, you know, but as a Mountain West, as a conference, but also here at Nevada, we got to go out there and win games uh, to prove to the committee um, that the Mountain West is the real deal. Yeah, just piggyback off what he said, I feel as if we did have a, a, a little hate toward the committee uh, with how they treated the Mountain West teams. And and it's been a good good league all year, really, and just we wanted to uh, show why our league is so good. Any other questions here in the room for us? That's, we have one more right here. Guys, piggybacking off that Mountain West question, I mean, the league was so physical this year, a lot of great defenses. How much do you guys want to kind of put that on display, you know, first and foremost, is to be a physical team on the floor and, and, and to be a team that, you know, obviously defends at a high level. Is that something that's on your mind going into the game? Yeah, our, uh, our defense carried us the whole year, really. Uh, our identity is defense. Uh, we have a defensive coach, really, uh, and I feel as if we, if we just show that how, how physical our defense is, I feel as if they'll fail us. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, our conference as a whole is a really good defensive league. Uh, you know, San Diego State has obviously been known for plenty of years for being one of the best defensive teams in the country. Uh, and I feel like us in Nevada, we've done a tremendous job um, on the defensive side this, this year. So hopefully we can, we can go out on a big stage and show that we can defend. Thank you. Thank you. Keenan, Jared, appreciate you. We'll oh. excuse our student athletes and Coach Alfred will be here momentarily. Okay, we'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Alford and then questions for the coach. Yeah, uh, obviously just excited to be here. Um, we talk about it all the time. It's a blessing to be in this tournament, and um, our guys have done an awful lot of good work over the last four months to get to this point and very rewarded um, because of it, and hopefully we can uh, continue to play well. We've done a lot, a lot of good things on both sides of the basketball all year, and um, our guys have listened well and worked well and matured well. So. Um, being a part of March Madness is always a very special feeling. I think our guys are 
Uh, very excited about it. We weren't very experienced last year. We got a lot more experience this year. So hopefully that uh, equates to playing better basketball this year. So uh, very fortunate and pleased to be here. At what point this year did you think that your team had the talent to, well, to, to make it here and to, to, to advance? Yeah, it's always um, – that's a tough one because we knew we could be pretty good, but it didn't mean you were going to make the NCAA tournament. You know, we talk about it all the time. 362 schools and only 68 make it. It's the most exclusive tournament. It's the hardest tournament to get in in college athletics, let alone try to advance and win. So. Um, you know, in the next three weeks, everybody's ending their year with a loss except one. <laughs> so it's a, it's a very demanding tournament. But we knew this time last year uh, when we got beat in the tournament and we started putting together uh, a little bit of additions to our roster and just watching our guys last spring come out of the late season and the postseason that we had last year, we knew we were going to have more experience. And that experience has been one of the reasons why we're back here. Um, they tasted a little bit of it last year, uh, but they wanted more of it. And they've been able to accomplish a lot more this year along the lines, and they've been very, very consistent. So we knew we had a chance to get there, but uh, then being in a very demanding league like the Mountain West Conference, um, you knew you were going to have to play well. And we've played really good basketball uh, January and February and early March that have helped get us into this tournament. So we're well prepared because of the league we came from, and we knew we had a very good team, but that doesn't mean – uh, there are a lot of good teams that aren't in this tournament, so uh, but we knew we had a collection of guys that could get us back here. Can we ask you to please identify yourself and what you mean, Alex? Please. Alex Margulies, Nevada Sportsnet. Um, you look at the the big man inside for Dayton Holmes. Um, your thoughts and just what you've seen from him on film and how maybe he compares to Jaden Ledee, who is maybe the Mountain West best big man, and, and what kind of stands out there? Yeah, you know, one our. Our league, again, the Mountain West Conference has helped prepare us for that. Uh, playing against Osabor, playing against Ladee, other bigs, um, you know, New Mexico's big. Uh, so we've been able to play against really good bigs, and this, this individual, Holmes, is outstanding. Um, he can shoot the three a little bit. He handles the ball a lot. Uh, he's got an inept ability to draw fouls. He gets to the free throw line like ten times a game. So uh, that's where it all starts. But their guard plays outstanding. They're one of the best shoot, three-point shooting teams in the country. So doubling him and giving him a lot of attention opens up a lot of things to the perimeter. So we got to be very careful. We got to be diligent in how we go about guarding him uh, and the rest of the team. Um, but uh, obviously a, a huge concern because he's a he's been a dominant player all year, and he's a he's got a looks like a very good pro prospect uh, as well. So uh, hopefully we've been prepared by the league players that we've had to guard already. Matthew Coles, AP. How do you get your players to focus? And you know, it's not just another game. It's a tournament game, and you guys experienced a little bit of that last year. But how do you get your players to play their best, to have the energy, but you know, play within themselves? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I, I think a lot of that has to do with what your experience is. Last year, we had no experience. You know, Jared was the only one to play in an NCAA tournament when he was at Oregon State, and that was a COVID year. There was nobody in the stands, so even he had a different experience last year. So sometimes you, as a player, you work so hard, and this is what you want to get to, and then you get, you get to a situation like this, and you, you exhale, and it's like, we made it. <laughs> well, if that's your approach, then it's quick-lived, and it was quick-lived last year, and we didn't play good basketball. Um, there's a different feel to this team. Doesn't mean we're going to advance. That does, just doesn't happen. You got to go out and play. You got to play your A game. Uh, and now we have, again have been in an outstanding league, and the Mountain West has drilled us for the last two months that if you don't play your A game, you lose. Uh, the difference when you get to this point, you don't get another game. Uh, and I think our guys have a little bit more experience now that um, I haven't seen this team exhale. Last year there was an exhale because it was like whew, we got in. We're last team in, but we got in. And um, this team's been a little bit different. Uh, I think they wanted to prove themselves all year long, which is what they've done. And I think they want to stay here as long as they can because they, they want to experience more of what March Madness is all about. So hopefully we just stay in character and we put our best foot forward. And if we stay in character and do what we're supposed to do, then things take care of themselves. If it's not 
good enough, then we can still look in the mirror and say, hey, this is who we were, this is who we are, and we did those things the best of our ability. And hopefully that's what happens to these young men because they're very deserving of it. Uh, Alex Margulies, Nevada Sportsnet. Um, two areas for Dayton. You mentioned the three-point shooting and then the, the slow pace that they play with. In terms of your defense and trying to defend the three-point line, what are the types of things that you hope to see from your guys and the type of physicality to bring to be able to kind of keep that at bay? Yeah, again, you know, our league has been very physical uh, because one of the maturity of our league and the age of our league, we got a lot of teams that are playing four or five seniors. Uh, in fact, uh, it was ironic, but every time we put up a – uh, scout board in our offices, it's senior, senior, grad, grad, senior. So you're playing a lot of older teams now. Um, and Dayton is a team that, you know, wasn't in the tournament last year. Now they're in the tournament. Um, and Anthony's done an incredible job with them. And they got a lot of guys coming back. In fact, I'm not sure they have a senior um, that's in, in the rotation. So it's a team that is scary that way. And so we've just got to be who we are. Um, I think that's the thing that we've got to do. Our, our offense, we're, I think we're one of 13 teams right now currently in the country that have a Ken Palm that's in the top 40 of both offense and defense. So that's, a, that's what you want to be. That's what you want to, you want to be pretty solid in both areas. And our team's been that. And it's going to, they're a very good defensive team. So it's going to be a challenge for our offense. And they're hard to guard because they stretch you to the three-point line and then they've got a, they got a, a pro that's in the middle. So it's going to be a, a challenge to our defense as well. But again, we've played teams like this. We've been prepared for teams like this because of the league that we play in. And hopefully our guys can sense that. And um, you, you got to get off to a good start. And you kind of you got to impose your will a little bit. And hopefully we can do that. Uh, yeah, Tom Archdeacon from Dayton. Uh, Steve, you, you have a at least a familiarity with Dayton basketball, right? Going back to Donaher, mm -hmm. I guess, or just talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. Well, Newcastle is only about an hour from Dayton, so uh, a lot of familiarity there. Didn't know I knew about Dayton growing up uh, in Newcastle, uh, but I didn't attend camps. The only camp I attended was Coach Knights. Um, but I knew about Dayton a lot, uh, but didn't really become familiar with it until 84 when I was on the Olympics and Coach Donaher. Um, was our assistant coach. And then I really started following Dayton and understanding that. And obviously we were in the first four last year and it was great getting to see coach and spend some time with coach when I was there um, uh, for the tournament last year. But uh, just incredible respect for coach Donaher and what he's meant for not just, not just for the university, but what he's done for basketball. Cause he, uh, uh, incredible what he's done for the game of basketball over his entire uh, lifetime. So m my recognition of what Dayton basketball is all about goes all the way back to Coach Donaher. Uh, you just referenced Ken Palm. Um, Ken Palm where I actually lives. Be, be careful. I referenced it just because <laughs> of – KB telling me about it well, this that's morning. I, that's so what I figured don't, I don't to uh, let me have to dive into Ken Palm analytics because that's out of my. Well, I guess uh, my, my question is: you, Mike's actually talking to Ken Palmer, right? So he lives in Salt Lake. So, what what is the, the the extent that your staff is you know dives into analytics and uses that when it comes to prepare? Very much, just because we've got a young staff other than Coach Neil and I, we're the experienced old guys, but, and there becomes a part in our meetings, Alex, to where all this analytic, all this graph stuff, all this is great, but then, you know, Coach Neil and I will throw in, he can really play, period, or he's not that good. You know, we, we go back to the old school stuff uh, as well, but uh, yeah, analytics today are, are huge. They're a big part of what you do and, and how you set things up, but we are still a little bit old school too. You got to, you know, it's like um, the custodian that, that said that a long time ago when I was at uh, Manchester. You got to put it in one end, you got to keep it out of the other end. You, sometimes we make it a little bit more complicated than that. You mentioned Mountain West and, and how much that's prepared you. Last night, Colorado State went out and, and had a nice statement, went over Virginia. I guess your thoughts on that and then just the Mountain West as a whole going into this thing, I think being a little undervalued nationally and, and maybe the chip on the collective Mount West shoulder that you all as you know, individual schools want to kind of prove? Yeah, it's the first time I think uh, in my career 
that we actually had a group text of, of the head coaches uh, after the selection show. So it was good that Nico and, and his team kind of got things rolling in a very fired up way because they obviously played really well to, to dismantle a, a Virginia team that's very, very well coached and a lot of experience was very impressive. So the, our league's gotten off to a really good start and hopefully we can continue that. Matthew Coles, Associated Press. You're talking about being an old school coach, an older coach. How much is NIL and transfers figured into it where it didn't really figure into it just a few years ago? How has that changed your job? Yeah, a lot. And it's, it's made it uh, just a busier time. You know, I was talking to um, our athletic director and staff, some boosters that we have in the hotel this morning about it, that normally this is all about just watching tape on Dayton, watching as many game tapes as you can of, that they've played. and. And, and the schemes that you want to try to devise both offensively and defensively. And yet, you know, we're on the phone doing Zooms last night for almost two hours um, <laughs> with recruits. Uh, it's very, very different now. You know, recruits are on visits now. Um, it, it's an odd, that part of it's odd. Uh, I, I still wish there was a, a period of time that um, the 68 teams that are in the field can enjoy being something that you've worked for for four or five months to be a part of something special like this. But that's your only focus. Um, and then when we get past Phoenix in the Final Four, then we open it up for – that's always been the norm. Coaches know that once your season's over, then recruiting happens. It's odd that the recruiting now is happening before your season's even over. I think that's an odd thing that – that really shouldn't happen. Uh, it should be, and we do a good job. It's all about our current team. It's all about what we're doing, but the rules are the way they are now, uh, or the lack of, and you have, to, you have to do the things like we did last night to prepare for the next, the next wave of recruits that are coming in. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions. We're gonna go to Zoom, and Chris Murray has a question for you, Coach. Hey, Coach, I, I know you've worn a patch honoring Coach Knight throughout this entire season. I'm, I'm curious what you thought he would have thought of this year's version of the Nevada Wolfpack and how you guys have played basketball. Yeah, you know, um, Chris, for I think the majority of the season, he, he would have really liked what he's seen just because uh, I know what kind of characters we have on our, guy, on our team. These are high character guys that they do the job in the classroom. They do the job in the community. They represent. You play for Coach Knight. You always know it's about the the front of the jersey. So um, I think he would appreciate what our guys do and how hard they play. They've understood. We've talked about it here late in the year. They've understood, and it's one of the things that Coach was great about was going about the will to prepare and then the art of going from being a hard working team to a really good competing team, going to that next level of work. Um, and I think he would, he would have been impressed with how we value the ball. We don't beat ourselves very often. We take care of the basketball. We get good shots. Um, and then we really try to guard. Um, you know, I, I think if anything, he'd, be, he'd probably be shocked that it was somebody like me that's coaching a team that is guarding well. I think <laughs> that's probably what he'd be most, most shocked about. You guys have obviously built this program up and, and take a step every year, I guess. What would it mean to be able to go to the NCAA tournament this year and win a game and advance toward what you guys are building here at Nevada? Yeah, I think that's – that, Chris, that's the game. That's the plan. That's the next step because – and I hope our guys, you know, uh, can play well and give ourselves a chance to do that because – and we know we've got an incredible opponent uh, to, do, to do that against – but that is our next step. You know, this year we were able to – we took a next step in the league play. We took a next step in NTE, winning a championship in Hawaii. Uh, our non-conference was much better. Uh, everything has been better, better, better. And this team's better than last year. Uh, again, it doesn't, matter, doesn't mean you're going to win. doesn't mean you're going to advance. Uh, but we got a group of men in that locker room that uh, that's their goal. That's their game plan. So hopefully we can take another step. Uh, and continue to build this program the way we want to build it. Thanks. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Any other questions in here in the room or Zoom? Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate your Thanks time. so Good much. Thank you. Thank you. It's not on. At uh, 1235.